I finally passed my SE vertical exam after failing my first attempt. When I was studying for that first attempt, I made many mistakes, but thank goodness I corrected them and passed on my second try. In this video, we're gonna go into details on my study plan for the first attempt and for the second attempt. I'll highlight what worked for me and what didn't so that you can better prepare yourself for your SE journey. Let's go. I'm going to show you a spreadsheet that I used to track every single hour that I studied for both my first try and also my second try. I grouped these hours into subjects so that at the end we can see how much time I allocated for each subject. But before I go into the spreadsheet, I will cover a little bit of background about my experience before I decided to take this exam so that you can understand why I spent a little bit more time in certain areas than others. I was a curtain wall engineer for about two years. I was designing mostly aluminum and glass panels for high-rise buildings, and while that was great for my technical skills for load path determination, finite element modeling, and all that stuff, it didn't really cover much of the actual traditional building design, which is the majority of the SC exam. Then, after two years, I decided to join a more traditional building design company, and then I spent about two and a half years designing building structures that were made out of steel, concrete, wood, masonry, so all the typical topics that you see in the SE exam. But because I only had that about two and a half years of experience, I knew I had to put in a lot more time. That's why I started very early, and my plan was to put in 360 hours for both exams. Initially, I wanted to take both of them, and I wanted to spend 180 hours for gravity and 180 for lateral. The other reason was also because my wife was pregnant at the time with our first child, so I really wanted to get this exam out of the way before our first child was born. As we know, I only took gravity and I didn't pass the first time, so let's unveil why that happened and take a peek at the spreadsheet. All right, I studied 271 hours and 15 minutes, that's important. This was for my first try in October 2022. And you can see here that I logged every day that I studied and I also tracked what subject I was studying that day. Now, you can see here that I started very early on because I had in mind that I was going to study for both exams. The first mistake that I think I made was not laying out a study schedule early on. I pretty much just went at it studying and I had I had a schedule in mind of what subjects I was going to cover and how I was going to move on from subject to subject but because I was self-studying I was having to plan things on my own a lot more rather than if I was taking a specific course so maybe another mistake was not taking a course because for lateral I definitely plan on taking one but for here my first try, you can see that it wasn't until, you see, August 6th. That's when I prepared a study schedule. On that day, I met with my wife and I was still planning to take gravity and lateral, but I had just taken a, the PPI practice exam. I did terrible on because it was my first practice exam and I did not feel ready for gravity. I was supposed to switch to lateral at that point but I didn't feel ready and then we decided that I was just going to keep going on gravity and hopefully pass gravity the first time and then next year try to do lateral um, maybe study a little bit longer with you know our child but on that day I realized the importance of having a study schedule I actually planned out the remainder of my study schedule for for gravity I tried to plan out a schedule with both, with the added time that I needed for, for gravity. We knew we were going to Brazil, my, my home country, for two weeks, so I was going to have about two, two and a half weeks of zero study hours, and the exam was in October, and I just kept studying for gravity, and you can see here, I spent about a little over two weeks not studying, 
and then I continued on. I took the NCES practice exam, then I, I did better on that exam. And then I kept going until exam day. Now, you may be wondering how many hours did you allocate for each subject? Let's take a look at that. So I grouped up my time into these different line items here. You can see that I spent a lot of time studying for masonry and a lot of time studying for wood, for example. You can also see that I have this line item for practice exams and reviewing the practice, ex practice exam. And you can take these 53 hours as just an added time for each of these subjects, depending on which time I was reviewing the most for that exam, just because it was hard to quantify how much time I was spending for each different subject when I was reviewing an exam. But I think this was a big part of my study time because I wanted to take my time reviewing what I was getting wrong on each exam. And that's something that I think I did well and that I would recommend that you do as well. When you take a practice exam, just don't just move on after you get your results or just um, skim through the responses. Actually try to retake or redo those problems, even the ones that you got right, because sometimes you get a problem right, not because you fully knew it, but because you took an educated guess. So I think that's really valuable time that I spent there. And then I spent about 14 and a half hours just organizing my material, tabbing things up and, and doing that kind of stuff. Now, the exam is going to be computer-based in 2024. It's scheduled to transition to computer-based. I think it's still important to allocate time for that because you're going to be even more familiar with the codes and also the handbook that they may provide. I'm not sure if they will provide one like for the PE civil exam. You may not be allocating specifically this time as a line item. This may be distributed into concrete and other subjects now because you'll be spending more time reviewing ACI and all the other codes. But I think that's, again, another important time allocation. As far as my results, you see down below here that I got 27 questions correct out of 40. And for the afternoon, I got this A, I, R, U, and I, R. And what this means is A is acceptable. It means I aced the question or I got whatever I got wrong was minimal. I, R means improvement required. I got a portion of the question right and maybe a larger portion of it was not correct. But they felt like if I improved it a little bit, then it would be acceptable. That's why they left it as I, R. And then U is unacceptable. If you leave a question completely blank or you don't, you don't even write out steps that make complete sense to answer that question or you completely get it wrong. And for me, that was concrete. Even though I spent a lot of time studying for concrete, I spent 36 and a half hours studying for concrete. The subject that was covered on that specific question, I didn't really touch on. I'm not going to go into the specifics of that question, but Again, it could be a different material. If you don't really get a broad understanding of that material, there could be a question on the exam about something that you didn't study. And that's what happened with me. And then I got unacceptable for that question. And then the improvement required answers for the other two questions, um, they were for steel and also for wood. I attribute a lot of that to also time management. I remember the steel question, for example, I had about a half an hour or less to to finish it so i didn't even have much time to think through all all the answers i know that if i had a little bit more time i could potentially get that question from an ir to an a uh, potentially and this is something that i think i did wrong on this first try which was practicing pm sa style questions i think i studied a lot for the morning practicing those short problems, solving six minute examples, but I didn't really go in depth about the afternoon questions for all the subjects. I think I did that for masonry and that reflected on my A. I got an A for, for masonry. I felt really good about answering that question, 
but for the other problems for example for concrete and steel I didn't go in depth or I didn't practice as many PM problems and not only not practicing enough also practicing with a time constraint what I did for the second exam was instead of solving the entire question there are let's say A through E so five items uh, under each question instead of trying to solve each question fully and then moving on I would solve if the question had A through E I'd solve A through C or A through D of that question if I knew the full question and then even though I knew how to finish the question I would move on to the next one and this allowed me to finish all four questions first before the time ran out and I had about 20 to 30 minutes to go back to all four questions and then finish those answers and I still didn't finish the entire afternoon I remember there was one item on the steel question that I left completely blank because I couldn't even write out steps and there were there was another item that in a different question that I I didn't finish but I knew how to answer it so I just said literally wrote out ran out of time but I would and then number one two three I would do these equations I would solve it like this this way the grader would know that I if I had a little bit more time I knew how to solve that for the morning I got 27 out of 40 but honestly I felt really good about the morning I was expecting to get I don't know like 30 what probably happened was I fell for a lot of traps you know not checking the proper fee factors for concrete beams and different types of uh, footnotes for example and then ended up getting 27 out of 40 the second time around of course I don't know how many questions I got right because they don't give you uh, a diagnostics report if you pass the exam they just tell you that you passed the second time I actually left more questions not blank but that I guessed on I think I guessed on maybe five to seven questions at the end of the exam that I I had read and I either didn't know so I had to take an educated guess or I completely didn't know even how to take an educated guess on the question and I had to completely guess it so I was a little bit more scared the second time around about the morning than the first time but the questions that I did answer the second time I took the exam I was confident on them so even if I was completely wrong in the five to seven questions that I guessed the 33 to 35 questions that I actually answered I was pretty confident about them and hopefully I got at least 85 to 90 percent of them correct because also if you do some research online you see that people say that the bare minimum passing score and don't quote me on that that's just my opinion uh, is 28 in the morning 28 out of 40 and in the afternoon at least AA IR and IR now let me know if you know anyone who ever got that score 28 in the morning AA IR and IR and they failed because that I have not seen yet but that's it for my first try I was very distraught about failing this first exam because I had studied so much I got these results just a couple weeks before we had our first child so I knew that there is there was going to be a major challenge ahead of me to try to study for the exam again and take it in April of 2023 but let's see what I did differently and what my study schedule looked like for that second try all right for my second try I studied 85 hours and 15 minutes that's important remember and you can see here that it wasn't even half of what I had studied for my first try and my study schedule looked a lot different again my own personal circumstances we had a newborn so I could only study so much and trying to manage work having a newborn and this monster exam was definitely not easy so I thank God that even though I only studied 85 hours and 15 minutes for the second try it was sufficient and I ended up passing it but you can see here that I mostly studied concrete and wood I studied a little bit of steel I took two practice exams and that was it and then I took the exam again now what was different about this study here is that I actually 
was focusing on PM questions. Because I got an, an unacceptable on concrete, I really wanted to spend a lot of time on PM concrete questions. And that is reflected here on this table. You can see that I spent more time on concrete than the first time. So combined, I actually studied 86 hours for concrete alone between both exams. And then for these other subjects, you may wonder, Homelo, you didn't even study anything for masonry, bridges, and loads and analysis the second time around? Well, I technically did because I took those two practice exams and I reviewed them. So that was my way of studying for these other subjects, essentially just brushing up on what I had already studied for the first exam. And then when I was taking those practice exams, I was really focusing on time management because I didn't want to run out of time, especially for the afternoon again. And then in total here, you see I studied 85.25 hours and that brings us to a grand total of 356 hours and 30 minutes for this entire exam. This may not be what you need to pass the gravity exam. I know a lot of people who have spent only 200 hours or maybe even less and they were able to pass the exam. You may need more, you may need 400, you may need 500, I hope you don't, but each person is different. And that's what I wanted to highlight on this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are studying for the SC exam, I am proud of you for making that decision. The first step is deciding to take the exam. The next step is to study. And if you're looking for resources, I created a playlist for wood design that I go from the very beginning of the NDS tabbing all the way to member design and different components. Feel free to check it out next. I'll see you next time.